now we will quickly proceed towards the uh, technology presentation angelo george ceo bislery he is here please help me to welcome mr george from bislery thank you sir for being here it means again a lot for all of us and bislery is uh, one of our sponsors also so it has to be a little grand please help me to welcome everybody help me to welcome wisdom round of applause mr angelo george thank you good morning thanks uh, apac news for uh, inviting me to be part of this wonderful conference and uh, all the distinguished guests and participants uh, a very good morning what i'm going to talk today can i have the presentation on the screen what i'm going to talk about today is a concept called water credits i mean this is what we heard in the morning that uh, we have about 18% of the world's population but as far as fresh ground water is concerned we are seriously starved at just about 4% and when you look at that map of india you can really see that over 54% of the country is impacted in water shortage in some way or the other and not just that we have also been extracting ground water at the fastest rate among all the countries in the world now the cag report indicates that if we continue at this level in couple of decades we're going to have serious trouble in this country now just to put things in perspective how is the ground water extraction happening across uh, different segments agriculture is bulk of it and you have domestic and we have industry about 8% now you can also see that the government of india the honorable prime minister has declared the lifi mission talking about rewarding individuals communities and corporates for environment friendly actions around seven different categories and one of the critical categories is water and you can see that in water it's about conserving water it's about using water more efficiently and it's also about reprocessing or reusing of waste water everything should get rewarded but like anything else in life you also need to kind of look at the resource equivalent in terms of usage and that is where the concept that the framework and the methodologies need to be defined because saving water in a rajasthan versus saving water in an assam is a different ball game and possibly need to be rewarded differently so when we spoke about uh, water credit to start with because that's water green credits there is obviously an issue because water is a kind of a local footprint issue unlike uh, carbon which is kind of universal so the environment footprint if you are looking at water there is also variability that happens with season and if you look at the carbon credits market over a period of time with all the kyoto protocol and all that is kind of really developed but as far as water is concerned that needs to be kind of put into place the regulatory framework we listened earlier that there is a central administrative body jal shakti ministry but obviously there are state regulations and water at the end of the day is a very touchy subject at a social level on the ground now when you are talking about water savings like i mentioned about a rajasthan and assam contest to illustrate the point establishing a baseline is extremely crucial and uh, because usage and patterns vary across different sectors i come from bislery one of the most respected brands we initiated the concept of mineral water in this country and been leaders for over 55 years now but we have two other areas to claim fame about which is about that we recycle more plastic than what we put into the market much before the ministry of environment regulations 
when it was 70 percent we were already at 103 percent and we replenish more water than what we extract from the ground so we have been discussing about water credits uh, within our organization in fact uh, our chairman has been very passionate about this that we need to talk about and bring to the government's attention about a concept called water credit reward conservation so we said let us get somebody who can help us study this better and create a framework which can then be adopted by different industries so we requested uh, terry sas to be part of this dr arun consultant team we kicked off this study in november 22 and concluded in october 23 interestingly if you look at the life mission that announcement happened in august 23 so much before that we had started our study to be able to table some other things now what were we looking at we said let us look at the national and international policies on water conservation and if there is a fiscal method of rewarding conservation develop a framework and something which i will explain a little later about impact adjusted water footprint because end of the day water is limited the effect is limited to a terrain and you need to understand it in the context of the terrain both good and bad apply this in the context of two of our own plants one located in a water scarce area and another located in a water rich or water sufficient area and finally the output of the report should be something which we call as a toolkit which can be adopted by across industries so that there's a baseline can be derived and anything better than baseline then you get a reward now when we talk about water obviously there is something called a watershed which is the area where the water lands and then flows into streams or whatever and when we did this entire exercise we used uh, the latest digital technology the digital elevation model to understand exactly what uh, the water area should be we are the terrain we are studying and then we applied three concepts the first a water audit from our production unit standpoint to understand efficiencies the water wastage fundamentally looking at the cost savings and the regulatory compliance as the first part of the concept but we believe that it is not just about water processing in the processing unit and the efficiency it has to cover end to end for the product from the packaging material to the final product that we create needs to be factored how much water are we consuming which will account for the green water which will account for the blue water and the gray water which is really the discharge water now from an organization standpoint it will give me an advantage to understand supply chain optimization my sourcing network and am i efficient about it so that was about virtual water and the final water footprint when we are talking about which is the real impact of a business it also has to be not just operational water but also the water that you incur in your supply chain to reach it finally to the consumer so that's about giving businesses total accountability for the water that they consume so in reality if i were to just summarize that's what it is on the last point on the overhead supply chain we just factor the energy because other costs are varied across the country and we said we should just limit ourselves in the study to only the energy component so these were the two units that we studied saibabad which is a water scarce belt the only water body around that is the gasipur drain which is the waste water from delhi and you have kamshet which is located near lonavla where there is a lot of water body lakes and rivers in fact indrani river flows very close to our plant over there this is the final result of the study you can see that there is 
a two and a half percent negative impact on account of the scarcity factor, which you can see that 43,000 over there, we have factored that. We have looked at the supply chain impact, which you can see a significant 1581, 671 over there. But there is a 6.2% positive impact that happens because of our water conservation efforts or rainwater harvesting that we do, which is almost 84% of the production consumption at this factory. So the real impact as far as a footprint is concerned is the last number which you find over there. Now, that's really the formula. There are two things which we have factored in this working, which is about a factor for a pollution deprivation potential and a scarcity deprivation potential for the negatives and the conservation potential also is factored that you are saving water. So in reality, you can see that normally to produce a liter of bisleri, we would spend about 1.08 liters. That's how efficient our plants are. We convert almost 90% plus of the water that we process. But when you take everything into account, you can see that Sahibabad, it cost us, no, I will require three more minutes, about 15 liters of water to produce one liter. Partly because we also have a glass production over there, so glass production consumes more water to clean it. In Kamshet, it requires just about 10 liters of water. Now, how does it compare against other beverages? You can see that to produce a carbonated beverage, it costs, actually, it entails about 50 liters of water. Now, this understanding helps us to draw baselines for anything which is related to the concept called water credit. So reality, the contrasting scenarios highlight that in a water scarce area, you actually spend more water, baseline is different. In a water rich area, the baseline is different. And both negatives and positives get accounted for. This is a toolkit that we have defined, which is our contribution to the concept of water credit to the Jal Shakti Ministry. And uh, to summarize, we need to define impact adjusted water footprint for calculating savings for water credit for any industry. Define the monetary value for the credit. I think that's an important piece similar to a carbon credit system. At the same time, water is a touchy social subject. So you need to figure out that uh, over exploitation to capitalize on credit does not happen with large entities. Uh, the speakers earlier spoke about a need for a common regulatory platform which will administer water. That needs to come in. And obviously the largest user of groundwater is agriculture, water efficient crops and uh, efficient irrigation practices need to come into place. So with this, uh, let me dedicate this report which we have created for water credits. It's a very illustrated report that we have which uh, is on our website and we are also sharing that with public. So the toolkit will help industries understand what is their basic consumption. Thank you so much. Well, thank you very much, sir, for the very wonderful information. Uh, sir